Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudul Shaktivel, and in this video, we're going to see about how we can do explicit weights uh, in Selenite. Right? We have already used APM, and we know how hard it is to use explicit weight. Right? We need to write a lot of code, and the code readability definitely is not going to be there. So, so I think uh, with uh, explicit weights coming from Selenite APM, your code will look much readable like this. Right? So let's say you want to find an element and then you want to wait for it to become visible you can use as simple code like this and let's say you want to do driver dot find elements you can do double dollar of elements dot and then you want to wait for the number of elements to become size of two uh, then you could write as simple as this uh, let's say you want to wait for an element to be visible and clickable then you can use something like interactable uh, similarly, you can also use uh, dollar combined by which way you may cover in the next class. But for now, uh, we are focusing on the should part of it um, and should become disappear. So you can wait for an element uh, to get disappeared. So this is how the code becomes, right? Again, should be, should have, should are all just, uh, you know, different overloader methods doing the same thing. So if you are feeling comfortable with using should, you can also use should. If you are good with should be, you can use should be. You can also use should have. Uh, but my personal preference is I normally use should be for waiting and uh, should have for a session. So without wasting a lot of time, let's do uh, do that in action, right? So um, just to save some time, uh, what I did was, um, so this is the uh, app that we are working with. So, so what I want to do is I want to click on this particular element and then go to this particular screen and maybe I want to click on it or I want to assert whether this add to cart button is present, something like this. So this is my use case. Um, so here I have launched the app and in the selenite.properties, I can set where I want to run the test. For now, I want to run the test on source lab Android app provider. Again, if you guys haven't watched my previous two videos, please do watch them. Uh, so the implementation that we are providing is to launch an Android app, right? So we can set that in the selenite.properties. Good. What? Once that is done, so I have also created two page classes. Again, uh, in terms of web automation, we call them as pages. In mobile automation, we call them as screens. Here, uh, this is there is something called a home screen, um, which is this. So this is uh, this is the home screen, right? So in the home screen, I want to select the first thing, right? Um, once I click on this, it will basically navigate me to the product description screen which is this, where I want to verify where the add to cart button is present. Just to save some time, I have already find, uh, find the ex, uh, you know locating strategies for these elements and used Android find by and iOS XE UAT find by um, to denote the element, right? So this is how we normally use in APM as well. So there is no change in iOS too. You can still use the same way. Um, so what gets changed is how you initialize them. But in case of APM, you have to use uh, public home screen, and then you have to use page factory dot um, init elements. And then I do not know, I have never used this. Like, you know, you have to pass driver and then uh, this object, you know, all that stuff. But with Selenite APM, you don't have to do any of that. Um, all you have to do is, let's go to the test first. Um, so here's the test. If you go to the test, there is something called as screen object class, okay? If you go to the screen object class, there is a uh, method called a screen where you can pass the uh, type of page object that you want. So here, I want the page object of home screen class, right? Once you do this, this will automatically call the page factory, automatically initiate the elements by calling the page factory dot in element methods, and you don't have to do anything. So now you get an object here. So this, you can rename it to home screen or whatever, and then you can simply say home screen dot and then there is no method that I have created there. So let's go ahead and, and basically create a new uh, method here to interact with the element. So let's call it as public void, um, click product one or select product one, whatever. Um, and then all you have to do is do a dollar. This is uh, element, uh, this is product one. Uh, this is, this you can use from selenate.dollar or selenateapm.dollar, whichever you feel comfortable. Um, in this case, I'm just uh, insert using it from Selenite. You can use it from Selenite APM too. But um, what I can do is I can just change it to Selenite APM. Just a second. Let's use it from Selenite APM because uh, that has some 
methods. Okay, good. So, so if you notice, oh, okay. So we haven't exposed the element web element here. Um, uh, okay, I will create a new PR for that. But in the meantime, what I can do is I can use cell night dot dollar and then pass the product, right? So this is a small improvement. I will create a PR and get this done. Um, and now uh, the explicit weights. So if you notice here, should have, should be, should, uh, all these things are just weight. So you can see should. So you have all these things, should not be visible, should not, all these things are possible. But in my case, I normally use should be, and then there is a class called as condition um, dot visible. So there is a class called as win, uh, condition and the visible is the stuff. So you can also do a uh, static import, okay, for all these things and your code becomes dollar dot dollar product one, which is means find the product one, wait for it to be visible and then perform a click operation on it. And this is how simple it is, right? Um, here, the export that I have used here and here will find all the elements, for example, uh, in this page, if there are six elements, it find all the six elements. So even if though you find all the six elements, if you wrap them into web element, it will find the first index. So this should work, obviously, right? Once I click on it, it basically navigates me to the next screen, right? So I can do uh, method chaining, and then instead of doing new uh, product description screen, we can still leverage the screen method uh, and then pass product description screen dot class, right? And let's do the import, static import from screen object class, right? And this will return me a new instance of product description screen. Um, and I go here and create one more method. So this one, uh, public avoid check whether add to cart button is present. Button is percent right it's it is very easy uh, to do this uh, the same thing so use dollar add to cart dot and then do the import dot should have i i normally use should have for assertion and should be for uh, explicit weights okay but everything else remains the same so you do the same thing and you can do the static import here so now you have done the assertion. So this is assertion, okay? This act as assertion, even though it does the same job as should be visible, this is like an assertion, okay? And uh, let's go to the demo test. And then here I can call um, uh, click product one. And after clicking product one, I want to check whether the cart is present, right? And then instead of creating this, what I can also do is, you know, uh, repaste this like this, right? Good. So now you create an object for home screen dot class and then click on the product one and check whether it is displayed. You don't need this test for now. So let's try to run it and see if it is working. Okay. And then you might have something in mind. Hey, Amudan, you didn't mention how many seconds it has to wait. Okay. Let's see what happens. So selenite by default waits for four seconds. Since, since this element is already found in four seconds, it didn't do anything. But let's say if you want to override this uh, four second default waiting, then you can add a parameter here and then you can say how many seconds you want to wait for a maximum amount of time. Like you can give 10, whatever that you feel comfortable, okay? And if you don't want to give this everywhere and just want to change the default wait time because your application is always slow, and then what you can do is you can simply say selenite by timeout in the timeout uh, equal to, uh, let's say I want to wait for 10 seconds by default, you can give them in milliseconds. So this by default, wait all your, um, wherever you are using should be, should have, it will wait for 10 seconds for the condition to satisfy. So, so yeah, so that's how you use explicit weights and that's how you use um, dollars. Again, you can also do find elements as well, right? So if you go to home screen, um, instead of this, you can also mention double dollars, okay? And then this also comes from here. Um, and then I can simply say element collection, okay? Don't use list of element because if you use list of element, there are chances 
you might face tail element reference exception and you might hand, need to handle it. But if you use element collection, we handle that for you. And what I can do is I can simply name it as products um, and then so here uh, products and I can wait for uh, should be and here the collection condition that I want to wait until the size is greater than one or greater than zero okay uh, and then I want to get the first element out of it okay and then I want to click it so this is how you can write it so I so it is very simple right so you want to first wait for at least one element okay this is a list of web elements so you have to wait until the list contains at least one element so you can get the first element and click on it right this is how you normally write the code so this collection condition class has a lot of other stuff which you can always have a look so you can wait for them to have any match that is matching your predicate that you pass all matches exact text write them with the text okay you can do all these stuff with you right but for now i will use the very simple one that is size is greater than uh, zero right that's a very simple condition right good uh, and then i simply run the test again and it should pass and it should pass on both android and ios uh, it should work so so that's all about explicit weights it's as simple as this uh, use should be and pass the condition um, by default it waits for four seconds if you want to increase the time out you can also do here or you can do that at the individual uh, element level as well. Okay. So yeah, that's all about it. I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, tada bye bye from over there. Bye.